Today we're going to talk about Ohm's law. So in the last tutorial we talked about voltage, current, power, and energy. We talked about a glass of water and the flow and all that sort of stuff. But the flow isn't always free. Sometimes there's something that makes it so this the flow is resisted, and that is called resistance. And today, Ohm's law is the way we're going to relate voltage and current because they are definitely related. Now, I'm just gonna point out that there is resistivity and resistance, and right now, I'm just gonna ignore resistivity, but it is something different, and so when we're talking about this, say resistance. So we have a very simple law that compares voltage, current, and resistance, and that is called Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is basically V voltage equals the current I times resistance. And that can very easily mathematically be switched so you have voltage over the resistance, that V looks terrible as always, equals current. And you know, honestly, we could do voltage over current equals resistance. You can move this thing around however you want, but I typically like to see it in this way. Uh, it's a uh, pretty way for me, but honestly, the voltage over resistance equals current. It's probably the best intuitive way to understand this. And as you can see here, so if you have a voltage and you lift that glass higher, if you have the same amount of resistance, you're going to have more current. But if you have the same voltage and you increase the resistance, you're going to decrease the current. So one of the things about this is you'll notice this is a very linear relationship. If you change any of these, the other things are going to change linearly. And this is not the case with a lot of components, but with resistors, we typically treat them as linear and we don't really worry about those other cases in the vast majority of time. So voltage over resistance equals current. This is so huge. It's going to be used in basically everything, every circus class from here until forever. And then a lot of the things in electrical engineering still refer to this, even if it's not circuits related. So this is an incredibly important thing and also very straightforward and you're going to learn a lot about it, but let's go over it a little bit more. So if you are given a circuit, let's just put a node right here, a resistor, and then another node, we already have everything we need to solve something. So let's say this is going to be 100 volts and this is zero volts. So now we have 100 volts across this resistor. And then let's say this resistor is 100 ohms. We can use Ohm's law to very easily say, okay, we have the voltage and we have the resistance. So we'll wanna use this format. We'll say 100 volts over 100 ohms equals one Amp. Okay, that seems super simple, and it is super simple. It gets much more complicated, but that is the essence of how you can use Ohm's law to solve for the current, or if you happen to know, um, if you happen to know what the current is, then you can do the same thing of saying, oh, I know I have one amp through here, and there's 100 volts across it, so whatever I need. So you can use any of these, you just need to have two, and then you'll figure out the other one. So this is pretty simple. And you notice I use the word ohms and it's, wow, that is, and I, I apologize. My handwriting is so, so bad, but this is a Greek Omega. Let's see if it can look a little bit better. No, that just looks like some sort of farming implement now. Um, but that is what that symbol is. That means ohms and that is the measurement of resistance. Now there's actually something out there that is called a Mo and it's an upside down Oh my goodness, that's really going to stretch my ability. And that is 1 over R. And that is called conductivity. And that can be Mohs or Siemens, whatever you want. So 100 ohms would be uh, 1 over 100 Siemens. And that's just an S. Or you can also do 1 over 100 Mohs. And you're not really gonna see that that often, at least I haven't. If you do, well, great, I'm glad that I've introduced it, but you might hear that on occasion, and that's the only reason I wanted to introduce it to you. But in my career and in my time in college, I very, very rarely saw that. So if you do that, you can totally change Ohm's law to, again, follow those rules. But now that I've put that out there, we are gonna completely ignore this ever again, so. Enjoy. So before we get into the samples, I just want to give two cases of the extremes of Ohm's law. So if you have V equals IR, imagine your R is zero. 
So you have V over R, which equals zero. What does that come out to be? It comes out to be infinity. And that is called a short circuit. And that's something what happens if you take a battery and you just put a wire from one end to the other, that wire is essentially zero resistance. So that battery outputs as much current as it possibly can until it melts and everything goes away. In most cases, you don't want that. In some cases you might. I think when you are doing welding, they try and get that as, that resistance as low as possible so that they can get as much heat there as possible. But this in general is something we want to avoid because it usually means your circuit's about to blow up. Now, let's say we have the opposite problem, voltage over infinite resistance. Okay, there we go. Then what is our current gonna be? It's gonna be zero, get the exact opposite. And this is called an open circuit. And sometimes this is what you want, and sometimes this isn't what you want. Sometimes when you have a circuit and you're testing things and you are not getting any current, it's like, oh, okay, that means that I have an open somewhere in this. And if it's on your circuit board and you can't see where it's broken, that's a problem. But at least you know from there being a complete lack of current that is, is an open circuit. So those are the two extreme cases of Ohm's law when resistance is zero and when resistance is infinity and how that affects your current I. So with that out of the way, let's actually jump into a couple of examples so we can see how this is used practically. Now we're not gonna be able to solve anything crazy or anything truly that interesting until we learn a couple of more tricks, but at least we'll have a couple of examples of how to do Ohm's law in very simple circuits. Okay, so the first circuit that I'm gonna set up here so after that super simple cir circuit that we had, oh man, okay, I'm just gonna stop complaining about that and keep on going, is we are going to have 15 volts here, five volts here, and 200 ohms right there. So when you're dealing with voltage potential, and it's that voltage across something, and that's what's important. So when I'm holding the glass here, it doesn't matter that I'm actually in the basement right now because all I care about is from here to here. Now, if from here to here was sitting on the roof of my house or on the roof of our office, that distance is still the same. So voltage potential can move like this. And as long as that distance between the two points is the same, it really doesn't matter. So with that in mind, let's look at this. And now we are going to have our uh, V over R equals I. Whoa, that's a one. But now our V is actually 15 volts minus five volts over 200 ohms, which equals 10 volts over 200 ohms. So now we're just getting 1 20th, um, one over 20, which is about 0 0.05 amps or 50 milliamps. So the key thing that I want to take away from this is it doesn't matter that this was 15 volts or 5 volts because we could do this exact same circuit at 10 volts, 0 volts, 200 ohms, and then we'd still have 10 volts minus 0 over 200. Wow, that got out of control. And that's still going to equal 0 0.05 amps. So that is what I wanted to do this for. It's just to show that voltage is all comparative. I could even go the other way around. I could do that as negative 10 volts to negative 20 volts. It's still going to be the same thing. So voltage is all relative. It's that potential between or across, between two points across something else. So let's do another one with my paper. Okay, so two more quick examples. So this first one, I am, and notice how I'm keeping these simple. I'm trying to keep the math simple because to me, it's more about the intuitive understanding. You can use a calculator to get to do the crazy math, but if you want to be able to look at it and figure out how to solve it, you need to understand, oh, hey, that's actually that way. I can flip that or I can move that and it won't actually affect anything. So that's, that's where I'm going with this. So let's actually assign this 10 volts and assign this 20 volts. And then we will say this is 100 ohms again, just for the fun of it. So now I'm gonna set the equation up. And this is something I always did in college and I still do quite a bit. 
I'll just write Ohm's law in the corner just to make sure that I'm not screwing anything up. So I'll have 10 volts minus 20 volts over 100 ohms, which equals negative 10 volts over 100 ohms, which equals negative 1 tenth amps, or 100 milliamps, negative 100 milliamps. Okay, so negative 100 milliamps, what does that mean? Well, that means that we looked at this and the way it's set up, you'd imagine, okay, glass is up here, but actually this is completely flipped where the higher potential is down here. So even though we have established that our current is going this way, in reality, it's going the opposite way. But since we established that the current is going that way, we want to say negative 100 milliamps. And that is an incredibly important thing to remember and something I still screw up with Ohm's law is you need to say, I am going to say that I'm going from this point to this point, my current is going this direction, and I am sticking with that. Because if you say, oh, that's negative, well, let me just flip things around, you highly, highly increase the chance of you messing up your math somewhere. So what you do is you set up the equation, you look at it, you say, hey, this is the way it's gonna be, and then I'm just gonna take the signs as I go. Because if I take this and I switched it, and I did all the math differently and went back up, then it would be, okay, 20 volts minus 10 volts over 100 ohms, and then I'm gonna get 100 milliamps, but it's going to be in the opposite direction. So that was the key with this one that I want you to take away is that that positive and negative is a matter of perspective. It's a matter of which way you're looking at it. So always keep that in mind and make sure that once you say, I'm gonna do this, and I highly recommend writing it down on the paper as you're doing it. Once you say, this is how I'm doing it, stick with it, don't switch it, don't change your mind or else you're just gonna confuse yourself. Or if you do switch your mind, switch your setup because you realize, oh man, that's gonna be a complete nightmare. Just be very, very careful with that. Okay, let's do one more. All right, so this will be our last example. So let's do the same things we've been doing. The ugly resistor, the Ohm's law in the corner. And then let's just say this is negative 15 volts and this is negative 25 volts. And then let's make this 1000 ohms just because I'm getting bored with 100. Okay, so we set up Ohm's law and we look at this and we say, okay, what's the difference between those? That's negative 15 volts. Again, based off of what we just discussed, I'm assuming that our current is flowing down. So we've got negative 15 volts and then got to minus that one, but that's minus negative 25 volts and then over one thousand ohms. Well, negative 15 minus negative 25 is a positive 10. So that actually becomes a positive number. You got 10 over 1000, which equals one over 100, which gives us 0 0.01 or 10 milliamps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I should just, I'm gonna learn some great things while doing this about calm handwriting. <clears throat> maybe everything will make sense. But the point I wanted to bring with this was, again, that different potential, it doesn't matter. So even though this is a negative number and this is a negative number, it's all about the relationship between the two. It's all about that voltage across this. So just because this is negative 15 and negative 25, in this case, because there's nothing else, those numbers are basically arbitrary. Again, you could go and have 10 and zero and it acts the exact same way. Now, if this were part of a bigger circuit, then of course it makes a huge difference. But negative voltages in general just mean that they're on the different side of a, an arbitrarily decided zero. Again, we shoot in my basement. All of these circuit bread tutorials are shot in my basement. So we are beneath the ground. I can see through the window, there's that. So if we assume ground is zero, everything we do here is below that zero, but it still functions. If we were on the roof, if we were on top of a skyscraper, it more matters about what the difference is. And so I'm going to establish that for where I am, this point is zero, or I could establish that point being zero. It really doesn't matter. That voltage can be very, very different depending on what perspective you have looking at it. So that's it, that's Ohm's law. Hopefully I gave you a good overall view of what it is, gave you a couple of examples and how you can use it to solve extremely simple circuits. 
Next, we're gonna go into a couple of more definitions, talking about branches, nodes, all that sort of stuff. And then after that, we'll be able to start doing a little bit more complicated circuit analysis, in which time I'm gonna be super excited because this is a lot of fun for me. I love doing circuit analysis. I'm not good at it, but I enjoy it. So hopefully that was helpful. Again, as always, we put a written tutorial on circuitbread.com. Link is down in the description. So if you have any more questions, wanna see a couple of different examples, those are on the written tutorial. It's gonna be slightly different than what we have done here today. So if you have any great questions, you can put them either here in the YouTube comments or over on circuitbread.com in the comments. And we will catch you in the next one. Have a good one.